ice cream without space or without time. The universe, the world, our planet is growing. And uh, who knows where we're going to? Yet, a cry shatters our time and our space. Camille Claudel's implorer breaks all dimensions. Who is he shouting at? With her, we are looking for a face as well. And in the face, with a capital letter, the face of everybody. Our story is lacerated, and there are lots of questions that we can see on the faces of people. Can we give an answer? Living the tearing grief, having it live inside us, reside in the cry, in Jesus Christ's cry to the Father and to the whole humanity. Emile Cioran cried, my strength, well, I have wasted it all. I have used it all to cancel the traces of God inside me. And now I will forever be unemployed. Who believes is not unemployed, however, does not work. This is not a play on words. It is the paradox of every Christian life. The spirit works, acts, creates. We are brought about on his wings, like at the beginning, when Ruach, female in Jewish, and Sofio in Italian, breath, glided on the waters like a bird protecting its nestling. Once again, Emile Cioran cries, my Lord, why don't I have vocation to prayer? Nobody in the world is closer to you and further away from you. A bit of certainty, some consolation, that's all I ask for. But you cannot answer. You cannot. Nobody has the vocation to prayer. Because the bond with the Creator is the gift of life. The answer is in the perception of the source of love inside us. Only if you listen to it. Emile Suran is uh, um, uh, real key it replies to me the Suran. you or go oh god close by i am constantly listening give me a sign i'm very close to you only a very thin wall separates us an intellectual and versatile writer like julia cristeva launches her cry to humanity and to the Castilian woman of the Siglo de Oro, Therese of Jesus, uh, whom she discovered and studied at length. Julia Cristeva said, as God is unconscious and the unconscious doubles us, uh, I state that the other person, with a capital letter, lives inside us and is not beyond us, and that uh, the transcendence uh, you desire is imminence. I also expect to find uh, in, the, in the writing uh, some signs that uh, uh, this assumption will not be decanted because this is what you're aiming at. Isn't it true? Don't you keep saying that God is inside you? But Teresa's God is not the God described by Julia. A glimmer is opened in her long, rich, and detailed essay or novel, which contains Teresa's answer, her testimony, donated to man and woman who are trying to free themselves today from the twists and turns of daily life. Julia Kristeva wrote, before the Viennese doctor laid love on the couch, Teresa discovers there is no psychic life with no love. 
We need to think about it non-stop and then write about it. In today's crisis of values between secularization and fundamentalism, we all agree on saying that there is at least one to save, love. But which love? For Teresa, it is the gratuitous love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that fill it with mercy. The Carmelite nun longs for him alone, looking at him and listening to him as a father, spouse, friend, to whom everything can be told and from whom anything can be expected. Teresa shakes us with her female writing, full of the breath of women, that breath which goes from the outside to the inside and from the inside to the outside of our body, as Lucy Rigarai says, a spirit linking life to universe, to the deepest side of the soul. What we breathe is not separated from the cosmic breath. It is blown by the wind. The breath, with a small letter, is not the same as breath with a capital letter, which blew and never stopped blowing and uh, makes each one of us a continuous creation. In our society, though, everything weighs, everything is pressing. And uh, Raymond Carver is endeavored uh, by a state of mind which wears him out and uh, torments him. And uh, he writes, uh, fear of uh, seeing uh, the police car stopping in front of home, uh, and fear of uh, uh, falling asleep at night, uh, or fear of not falling asleep, uh, fear of uh, um, going back to the past, uh, fear of the present that flies, uh, fear of the telephone ringing in the middle of the night, fear of electric storms, fear of the cleaning lady with a mole on her face. Uh, Fear of dogs, I was told, don't bite. Fear of anxiety. Fear of having to identify the dead body of a friend. Fear of finishing all your money. Fear of having too much money, even if, if nobody will ever believe you. Fear of the results of psychological tests. Fear of being late and fear of, arri of arriving there before everybody else. Fear of my children's writing on envelopes. Fear they might die before me and make me feel guilty, a guilty mother. Fear of having to live with my elderly mother being old myself. Fear of confusion. Fear that today might end badly. Fear of waking up and find you've gone. Fear of not loving or not loving enough. Fear of uh, that what I love might be lethal for those I love. Fear of death. Fear of living too long. Fear of death. Already said this one. The very last fragment uh, after the chance meeting uh, considering trance exists in the marvelous life project and is not rather the breath which intervenes, he changes tone with the words of Therese of Jesus and writes, did you get what you wanted from this life despite everything? Yes. What did you want? feeling loved, feeling loved on the earth. Sofia Gubaidulina, the great Russian composer, turned this cry into a poignant tune with music. Dramatically, in her composition, seven words, those of Jesus on the cross. Nel 
In the sixth movement, uh, the sound uh, becomes uh, hard uh, because the bow moves towards the bridge, wants to go beyond the limit. The person leans out, reaches the bridge. The finite uh, conscience that needs to overcome itself goes beyond uh, looking for eras, for beauty. Margherita Hack, uh, the astrophysicist uh, who got to know the expanse of the sky and uh, explored uh, its mysteries with her Florentine humor, spoke about the many issues uh, and uh, uh, got to a turning point without uh, eliminating problems or the problem. And uh, she wrote, death turns our brain off, which is what I consider the soul. After death, uh, we are no longer there. Our molecules, the atoms uh, that uh, constituted our body, will survive uh, and will be used uh, to form uh, other beings or simply other objects. This is uh, what uh, uh, Aristotle uh, used to say, as the eyes of bats behave towards the light of the day, intelligence in our soul will behave exactly in the same way towards those things that by their very nature are the most evident. Evident like love and like death. Boris Pasternak has his character say, you may be atheists. You may not know whether God exists and uh, at the same time know that man does not live in nature but in uh, history and uh, that in uh, today's conception it was founded by Christ and that the gospel is the foundation. But what is history? It is beginning uh, secular values uh, to slowly solve the mystery of death uh, and uh, overcome it one day. The Russian poet wrote in the prayer in hospital, I feel your hands blaze, the hands that are touching me and uh, hiding me like a ring in its box. The liturgy uh, sings, uh, the source of life lies uh, in a tomb. The tomb becomes like a ladder to heaven. Uh, Boris Pasternak's uh, word, uh, words come back. From this moment onwards, uh, earthly death uh, is no more a concern for man. He has been redeemed by the blood of Christ. His life has changed not because he has reached him and uh, uh, because of a divine magic, but because uh, a new principle has been set. Uh, there is nothing to worry of. Death does not exist. Death does not concern us. There will be no death, uh, uh, John uh, the Evangelist says, because the past is past. Like saying, there will be no death uh, because uh, this has already been experienced. It is old. It, is, uh, it has tired us. We need something new. And uh, what is new is eternal life. Of course, uh, it is a matter of uh, uh, going through our last journey. And Pasternak is perfectly aware of this and writes, uh, going down with a candle uh, in the underground world that all of a sudden had uh, uh, been uh, blown uh, blown off and uh, the resuscitated rose uh, and uh, he the famous Russian poet and novelist uh, ends Dr. Zhivago with his unforgettable verses and leaves a trace in the history of human beings and of the entire humanity I shall descend into my grave and on the third day rise again and uh, even as rafts float down a river 
So shall the centuries drift, trailing like a caravan, coming for judgment uh, out of the dark to me. We proceed in this flow of events, uh, and uh, we resemble uh, Rilke's swan. Uh, and uh, we look ahead uh, while the swan is uh, uh, moving and uh, the laboring of ours uh, with all that remains undone as if still bound to it is like the lumbering gate of the swan. And in this excess of presence that uh, uh, perceives uh, the living being and uh, his uh, pulsating existence. Uh, and that uh, we may have this uh, certainty. God has uh, imprinted his face on man like a presence absence, and uh, man perceives this. As well as the dizziness, uh, the more he goes into himself. Rede in te ipsum and cannot grasp any image of himself. He cannot even grasp himself, but falls into the night where he can only find the emptiness of a track. Does our face express his face? Do we show it bravely in front of everybody else? This is freedom filled with hope, a life spent in the beams of the risen Christ, of the living being, uh, my present. It is the light and my future is resurrection, promise and hope, the risen Christ, absent and present. <laughs>